Good afternoon and welcome to our broadcast. Today we're going to talk about victimhood and how to be spiritual about it. Actually, I'll break it down more clearly in a moment. But before I jump into that, let me introduce myself so you know why I do these talks and perhaps why you want to listen. Um, my name is Barry Selby, in case you haven't seen me before. And if not, I'll tell you about how you can watch my replays at the back end of the broadcast, so stay tuned for that. I am an inspirational speaker, love and relationships expert, and a spiritual guide, and a best -selling, an author of the best selling book, transposed, author of the best selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for sing singles and couples, men and women. Uh, women create balance in love, life, and business, and I'm starting to expand into becoming more of a spiritual guide because, well, I'll tell you about that in a moment. Teasing things out. Um, I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which is why I support and serve the feminine more than anything else. And also, what led to this talk starting almost three years ago now, called "Messages for the Masculine: Inspiring a Feminine Heart." Today, we're episode number eight hundred and was it eight hundred fifty? Uh, I lost track. It's in here. The, the number, the number of episodes are in the title, and. I started yesterday with a new theme, not a new theme, it's just a more direct theme called living life through a spiritual lens, because that seems to be what's coming through more and more in my work and where I'm moving more and more forward to. So what I realized I need to do is talk about certain key things to life, which how you become spiritual functionally speaking, not just woo-woo speaking, but functionally speaking. This is what I'm talking about, calling it looking, looking, living life, sorry. I'm attempting to label it as living life through a spiritual lens. And today we're talking about stop being a victim or stop playing the victim is more accurate. So I'll explain what that is and why you might be doing it and how you can change that. Um, yesterday's talk, which was really the overview preamble, and I talked about a couple of pointers, one of which was this one in a very, very glancing blow, so to speak. But I want to give this more depth and more space because so many of us play victim and I'll explain what that means in a moment and I'm going to be very um, direct about this because almost every one of us in some way shape or form plays victim in our lives and I want to give you some clues and some hints and some directions so you can stop doing that <laughs> because the victim role is one of the main paths, paths into codependence or codependency of one sort or another so let me illustrate what I mean first, and then you, can, then you can tag along. So, if you've ever been in the place, and you probably have, I would suspect if you're human, where you got upset with somebody else's behavior. You got blown out of shape, you got upset, you got feelings, you got judgmental, you got um, guilt, sorry, you got resentful, or you felt guilty. Something happened that really knocked you out of center, and you got upset. That being knocked off center, is a place of being a victim. And I'll explain what I mean in a moment, but let me show you a couple of other examples, I hope. And by the way, this is never scripted, so I tell you you're gonna do something and I can't promise I can deliver on it because I may not know if I'm gonna get there. So let me see if there's anything else shows up before I get to the explaining about why this is so, and how you can get out of it. Um, here's one. I knew there'd be another one showing up. If you're in relationship with somebody, whether it's romantic or familial or business or any of those relationships, where you go, out of your way. In fact, you must feel like you have to go out of your way to make sure the other person's happy. So you're focused on pleasing them and making them feel okay. And frankly, it's tiring. This is not a pleasure to do, you do it out of duty. That duty also is a place of being of playing the victim. And then tie it all together in a minute. So keep, keep you can keep score if you want to. If you're saying yes I do that, no, you don't do that, yes you do that. Just keep score for yourself. You don't have to Write it up in below, although if you want to have any questions, you can put them in the comments and I'll respond about and, and give you answers. But I want to throw, if I can, if I can come up with a couple more, because I don't know if I will, but a couple more examples of what um, depicts, defines, and um, exemplifies the playing the victim role. So, to about getting out, bent out of shape, upset, judgmental, resentful, that's one of them. Two is... is going out of the way to please someone to keep them happy and it's duty and work and it's effort on your part. Those are two ways of doing it. Third one is, um, <laughs> oh, let's bring out the big guns, shall we? Um, <laughs> do, <laughs> do you have any emotional um, upset that happens if the police pull you over when you're driving? Or let me use another one as an example. That's one of the big ones. Like you're driving along and suddenly get the, the lights in the rearview mirror and do you get this sort of sense of dread or feelings of upset or concern feelings, that sort of stuff? That's one of those pieces of victim as well. And I'll explain more about that in a moment. Um, another place of that one 
is when you when you blame the government or the IRS or some authority figures, collective faceless power people, and you 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 feel that they're taking advantage of you or they're not doing what you want and you feel helpless. This again is been, is playing the victim. Now I'm, going to tie all, I'm attempting to tie all these together in a moment, but I want to see if there's any more examples of what victimhood would be like. Because there is true victimhood, and I'm not, I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about how we give our power away without, either without realizing it or without believing we can keep it ourselves. And that's the trap we fall into. So let me see if there's anything else before I dive into the explainers, because these are, these are symptoms, indications of where victimhood shows up. Um, if you feel that now this is on the same vein as the previous one basically but where for example if you were in school and you were well one of my own one was I was bullied in high school so that was one of my own experiences and I felt like a victim there that was one of my definitely uh, teenage year angst experiences so maybe you had experience of that being bullied pushed around just had a thought about something else that doesn't does that fit not at this moment okay we'll come back to that one Ooh, okay, now I'm going to <laughs> I'm going to walk the edge of this one. So, if you're in a relationship that's abusive, and you won't leave because of the kids, or because of duty, or because of the marriage, or because this person might have some good in them, and you want to save it. That's being the victim, and that one's a painful one, I know. And I'm going to talk about that one a bit, sep maybe later on separately as well, because I want to make sure you get that you don't have to stay, especially if you're being hurt, abused, on any level. It's not healthy. Um, I'll come back to that one. That's a, that's, that's, a, that's a more painful, more wounded one. I'll come back to one later on. So let me go back up to another piece. Um, there was one other one. Oh, yes. When you're in a place where you may be at high school, where you're competing and you're losing, or you're in the grades of your school and you want to do better, but people are doing better than you are, you're not feeling as good as, and you start to judge them, that's also a victim place to be in as well. Ju judgment kind of overlaps this one, so I may talk about that one separately another time. But this place I'm getting to, and I'm, and I'm sort of making it so down, you may be going, this is so depressing. Well, yes, but I want to give you the way out because all of us, I believe, at least do one or two of these um, behaviors that result in being a victim. So let me move along the story past this point. So take a breath, breathe in, relax, relax, for, a sec relax for a second. I'll do the same thing. The victim mentality basically comes down to this. When we feel that we don't have control, when we feel we don't have autonomy, when we feel we don't have freedom in a situation, we're placing ourselves in the role of being the victim. We're giving our power away, basically. This is what's happening. Those people that, can have, that we think have control, or that we judge, or we feel resentment for, or that have power over us, all of those people, we've said, I can't do this, here's my power, take it from me. That's what we're doing subconsciously and non-verbally. Even in abusive relationships, the same thing's happening because when they abuse you and you let it happen because, to be honest, most people abused don't fight against it. They, they, they let it happen because it feels almost like it feels safer, as bizarre as that sounds. They'd rather let the abuse happen than fight against it and, 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 and um, do battle with that person. A lot of times it's tied up to childhood behaviors and that's where all of this stuff springs from is we don't think we can stand up for ourselves so we think we have to be play second best and we basically become the victim. So it's not overt, it's subtle in some ways. Sometimes it is blatant, but oftentimes it's more discreet. I just did the statement twice, there are different ways, okay. So being in that place of victimhood puts us in a place where we can have the excuse that we don't have control, we don't have power, we don't have freedom, but it's a lie. And this is the thing. We lie to ourselves. I'm not judging you. You get to do your own judgment. But we get to judge ourselves and lie to ourselves thinking that we don't have our power. And what it is is an escape clause. Because this is the thing. When those things happen and we feel like we're a victim, we're actually avoiding being responsible. Now these are big principles I'm giving you here, so I hope you get this one. When we're in a situation where we blame the IRS, or we blame the government, or we blame the police, or we feel like we can't take control or take charge. We're not taking respons responsibility for our own power or responsibility for our own actions.
just watching the thing. So I've been, I've been <laughs> okay, I've got to admit this too. I've been pulled over by the police more, one or so, once or twice when I've been driving over my multiple years of driving experience, just to be transparent. Um, and reality is, I would say that every single one of those times, I contributed to them pulling me over. It wasn't, an, it wasn't like a random like, why did they pull me over? Now I'm, 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 I'm not going to go down. I'm not going to go down. That, no, I'm not going down that path. Um, but the thing is, is I, did, I, you know, I was speeding, or I had a tail light out, or I did something that wasn't um, what's we're looking for. They didn't fit in, so I got so I stuck out and got pulled over. So I had the responsibility that if I had been more present, and this is actually a little okay. Let me tie that piece in. Mm -hmm. This is the old training stuff coming out from thirty years ago, so it's all fitting into place. The victim role is where we abdicate our responsibility. It also is where we abdicate our ability to think about the fact that we could have contributed to what happened. And this is the one that's hardest to grab for most people. When we are in a place where we get pulled over by the police in our cars because we were speeding, we get a ticket and we get upset with them and we judge ourselves and we blame and we all that stuff we run. Taking responsibility, taking, try that again. Taking responsibility means this happened, I need to take care of it. Almost that simply. Now you can be emotional about it too, but you don't just sit there and go like fuming, get upset and stewing your own juices and basically start creating an ulcer. You go, I gotta handle this. And I'm gonna do better next time. That's part of that course correction we talked about, I talked about earlier about really finding the path through so you don't have it happen to you again. Victimization tends to be a place where you'll put yourself in that role repeatedly without any choice or any desire to move out of it. When you start to take the reins back and take charge of your own life, meaning not like a big thing, but just simply saying, you know what, I screwed up, I'll do it better next time. Then you're actually taking charge of your life. It's a simple step. It's one step forward into that place. It's not like it's a radical life-changing experience, although it will change your life if you do more of these. In the context of abusive relationships, since that's an area I work about around working with my clients is relationship. Abusive relationships, yes, it can feel like it's the most painful thing to do to leave the abuse, as backwards as that sounds. For your own sake and for the sake of your children, if you have children, leaving may be the smartest thing, the healthiest thing, and the most empowering thing you can do when you get to the other side of it. But it can be challenging, I know, because you can be in relationships that are so enmeshed, whether it's financially, legally, emotionally, or anything else, it's hard to leave. But when you make that choice to step free, now I'm not gonna get into all the details of that, it's a lot more, that's like unpacking a whole other conversation there, so I'm not gonna go into that. I've talked about it before in other, other Facebook lives. And when you step out of it and you get freedom, that's when you take your life back. That's when you empower yourself and you can be free. Now, on that same theme, if you've been in these, these abusive relationships more than one time, as in you've had previous um, abusive relationships, and I'm just gonna reflect on um, a friend of mine, Bridget, um, Bridget, not Bridget Bryant. <laughs> She did a CD release party last night and she and one of her songs on an album was about forgiveness because of her father's abuse of her. And she shared about it on stage last night, so it's not private information. But the thing what she said, and this is the thing I want to talk about in this piece, is those of you who've gone through abusive relationships, this is, this is key to you to understand. She said that she went straight when she moved out of home to find the most abusive man she could find. Not not consciously, not intentionally, but she ended up in the most abusive relationship she could have been in because she was reiterating what she experienced when she was a child with her father. And she kept doing that relationship after relationship after relationship until she finally got clear and she finally said, I can't do this anymore. She said, I would take my power back. Now what she did, I don't know the actual journey she took, which I think she worked through therapy and a bunch of other things too. Um, she wasn't one of my clients, but just to say what she did though, and she's got clear to the point of saying that, um, she would never go through that again, which meant that she had to stop dating personally. And, and she said, she, I think she had five years, four or five years of not dating. Because what she said was she had to recalibrate her picker, which sounds cute, but what it means is, is changing the um, criteria she's using to select relationship. Now, that's a lot more complicated, but the same thing is applying here, which is she's taking responsibility for her choices. And that, if you're doing the same thing, is massive freedom. So the cornerstones of responsibility are freedom, choice, responsibility. No, I already said that. 
Speaking of accountability, okay, okay, I'll get that one in a minute. I'm sort of seeing, excuse me, a bunch of things hitting me at once, so I'm just trying to articulate this. So when you get clear about what it is that you really want to have, and you're really clear that you can't do the same thing again and again and again, because it doesn't work anymore, that's when you start to change the point from victim to freedom, that you choose to step into a new place. It is absolutely challenging, I understand, to step free of that victimization, that victim role, but it does give you a new place to play and it does take action. So again, having freedom, having choice, and also taking your power back, that was the third one, is the, is the cornerstones or the markings of responsibility. Now, I want to sidebar again. So clues that you may be putting yourself in the victim role is, first of all, you start blaming and judging other people. You, you are in resentment, you're in judgment, maybe you're feeling guilt yourself. You're basically running a run, bunch of, of um, I say this nicely, limited feelings, negative feelings on other people because you're not being accountable. So that's the first sign that something's going on because you're running all that stuff. Now, I'm not saying you can be, ever, you can't, this is what I talked about yesterday, by the way. You, you are not going to be free if you're just simply saying everything's fine, God's got it, it's all spiritual, etc., etc. Um, it's more than that. Because that's spiritual bypass or spiritual saran wrap, as I described yesterday. I watched this broadcast about that, explained in greater detail. When you start becoming clear that what's happening isn't working, that's the first step, being awareness, as I've talked about before. The second step is to take some, is to choose to make a different choice, or to, take, to choose different, uh, to, to take a different path, to choose a new action. Thirdly, is taking that action. So if you are in a place where you're judging and blaming other people for things that aren't working for you, and it ain't changing, you might want to think about making a different choice. First become aware, get clear what your choice is, and make a different choice and take action on it. That's the way to move through. Now the thing about this is, it may not be easy for you to see when you're in the middle of it. So stepping free is one of those first steps to walk away, to make space, to, to, to choose not to date anymore, is the first step towards getting clarity because you can finally go, let me recalibrate, let me see what's going on. That's where freedom lies. So in the accountability framing, which is part of what responsibility is, is you've got to start realizing first of all that you have a place to play a part to play in this process so this is actually from seminars took years ago and it talks about how there's um three levels of accountability three levels of awareness that you can do something different and the three levels basically are the first level is um creating meaning that you know that if you speed you're going to get a ticket and you get a ticket anyway because you're speeding that's creating it. You knew better, but you didn't do better. That's that's one thing. Now, um, actually, no, excuse me. That's the second one. I'm jumping ahead. Create basically is where you. Sorry, I'm watching my analogy to make sure it fits. <laughs> Let me try another way. So. Let me just give you the three and then I can explain it later on. So there's three aspects of, of becoming responsible and being becoming accountable to be responsible, which is you create the situation in the first place. So you're actually instigating the relationship, the problem, the challenge, the upset. The second one is promote, which means you may be in the situation, but you're also making it worse. You're antagonizing, you're provoking, you're making it happen. The third one is allowing, means you're staying there, but you're not leaving. It's three, three different levels. You're actually entering into it, you're putting up with it, or you're just not leaving. Those three things, those three levels, are indications where you're not choosing to be free. You're choosing to be a victim. So staying in that situation isn't healthy. Whether you're doing it intentionally, accidentally, or making it happen, you've got a choice point to move out of that place. And that's responsibility. And responsibility is the ability to respond to life. That's the way I frame it, because I was taught that. Which means that you can get out of victimhood by choosing to be responsible for your own actions, your own life, and your own choices. You tend to be a victim and you think, don't think you have a choice. So getting choice is a good step towards freedom. And so I'm going to talk about that and give you that, that hint. I'm giving you basically a very slim um, taste of this. I'm actually giving, I'm, unfortunately I didn't give you one clean slice. I gave you like tip bits of several pieces, but I hope this is making some sense. Um, I'm not going to go much further because I want to keep this fairly dis at least discreet, but also I want to let you know, I talked about this yesterday. I'm, I'm putting together what I think is going to be a masterclass of this. It's going to be teaching at least four components of, of living life through a spiritual lens that will give you where you want to go. So stay tuned for that. It's not announced yet. I don't have any on my website. It's not real. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not on paper right now. It's not actually exposed. So it comes soon. 
But if you have questions, thoughts about this, please reach out to me. I can I can help you. The relationship stuff I talked about with abuse. One of my one of my core elements of my coaching is holding space for my clients who are going through challenging situations. If you're in a place where you want support, I'll put a link in the comments to get a discovery session with me so we can talk about it. Um, I did talk about this yesterday because it is a cornerstone of coming back to yourself to really learn how to live inside your own soul, your own spirit, your own beingness. That's where a lot of times you go for for real love because a lot of times people look for love outside ourselves. That's actually another piece. Of, that's another part. Oh, sidebar. Being a victim is part of codependency. So yesterday I'll talk about it again tomorrow because I'm sure there's more to come through with this. But really, when you start taking your power back, you start to really honor and respect yourself. And that takes the way you out of codependency into independence and honoring of who you are. And self-love, as I've talked about so many times, and I've been promoting myself on meditation, I'll put the link in the comments for this, is one of the cornerstones for learning how to take care of yourself and respect yourself and honor who you are once and for all. So the self-love meditation will be in the, in the comments for you to check that out as well. Um, discovery session, if you want to find out more about how to work with me. I'll also put a contact form in there as well because I don't have anything structured yet set up on my website about how to talk to me and get some help around this area of spiritual awareness and spiritual lens to see life the right way. But if you want some help in this area, I'll put a link in the comments for a contact form. You can just simply put your name and email in there and send me a request for more information. You can say, I'm looking for help in this area and send me the email and I can give you some help. So that's three things I'll put in the comments to give you something to start with. Um, this is becoming a series, I guess. It's about living life through a spiritual lens. Um, it ties into relationships too, just it ties into much more than that, but it's really where I'm bringing my spiritual teachings forward. I've been avoiding it for two and a half years. It's time to start talking about it, so I'm bringing that forward in my talks. So if you want some spiritual guidance, that's part of my work as well. I'll, you can contact me through the contact form and we can talk. Um, this is my Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Yesterday was an hour early, I know. I mentioned that. Um, but if you want to see my broadcast, you can find them on my business page. So first of all, if you want to join me live, you go to my, this is my Facebook page, Sorry, if you're watching this live now, it's okay, but you may be watching the replay and watching somewhere else. So I go live on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. You can watch me live here. You can be, you can flag to make sure you get notified when I go live, which is at 5 p.m. Pacific time, every day of the week, seven days. Um, second, third. Replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author, and you can like my page and you can watch them all there, although I'm, I'm noticing I've only got about 300 of them there, only 300 of them there. Thankfully, I've been backing them all up and putting them onto my YouTube channel, so definitely recommend going to my YouTube channel, which you can subscribe to, which is Barry Selby on YouTube. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine, and you can find all of my broadcasts, every single one of them, including this one when I upload it, in reverse order from newest to oldest. You can search through for titles and for keywords you want to get help on. Um, that's the replays. You've got some links will be coming, and just give you verbally the links you can get. So the contact form is barryselby.com forward slash contact. Do have a discovery session with me, ladies, you go to barrysilver.com forward slash chat, and my self-love practice is barrysilver.com forward slash self-love. Kind of make it easy. So those will all be in the comments, so you can click on them when I put a most, post them up later on. If you have any questions about this, you can message me, or reach out to me on social media, or put questions below and I'll respond when I sign off. Are you ready to look, for, look at life through a spiritual lens? Are you willing to take responsibility for your own life? Are you willing to live life in freedom, in empowerment, and really trusting yourself? If you are, I can help, and if you already know how to do it, go for it. It's time we stood up, all of us, and become messengers and, and spreaders of wisdom, of guidance, of care, and it's time that we stepped into our own authentic expression. Living authentically is the true um, success story nowadays. I'm, I'll find another way of saying it, that's not quite the way I want to say it, but it's close enough. So with that, thank you for watching, I appreciate it being with me, I hope this made some sense, if you've got any questions, message me, and with that, I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourself, and uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye.